Cottage Cabin Project. If you want to follow along progress, it's the hashtag Cottage Cabin Progress. Uh, today's Tuesday. We've, up, we've been up here for two days. A couple months ago, I came up here and primed all the drywall. This cabin is a uh, from the ground up replica of a 1920s or 1930s sort of uh, you know northern Minnesota lake cottage here and uh, it's, a, it's sort of a perfect blend of uh, you know new construction plus uh, everything that looks old so I'm gonna walk you through here in a second it's a beautiful beautiful day in northern Minnesota here you can see we're, we're up here at the lake um, so today, uh, the big goal here to stay on track, we're, uh, we're hoping to completely finish the inside of this cabin uh, by the end of the week here from uh, bare trim, uh, bare drywall, all the way through to uh, finished ceilings, finished walls, finished woodwork. And uh, we're a little bit ahead of, ahead of schedule right now as far as that goes. So uh, today we've been focusing on uh, uh, getting all the woodwork prepped. It's a monumental effort for a home like this. I'll hop down off the porch here real quick. As you can see, Beautiful home here with the uh, true divided light, double hung windows. Uh, <laughs> people always underestimate how much work it takes uh, to prep and paint stuff like that, especially with a traditional trim style with a header and a stool and, and all this other stuff. So uh, I'll walk you through and uh, kind of show you what's going on here. Turn this around. Headed inside. All right, so here we are. Uh, ceilings have their finished coating on them there. We did a nice kind of creamy off-white. Uh, those are completely done now. As you can see, all the uh, windows are fully prepped. And I'm going through uh, after the apprentices and spot priming them with uh, True Oil Primer. Uh, you can see here, like I said out there, you can never underestimate how much work it takes to get one of these babies up to standard here, especially with the traditional trim here. Uh, miles and miles of caulking and filler and sanding and vacuuming and tack ragging. You can see we actually take apart all the windows, prep them on all sides, and this is the correct way to do, uh, to do these true divided light windows. You can see here it takes a monumental effort. They have to be completely taken out, including weather stripping and things like this. This is the best way to prevent those, uh, you know, wood windows, those pine sashes from turning black in all the corners here. So these were fully prepped, uh, have oil primer on them and dr uh, drying, and they're ready to go for tomorrow here. Have a little plastic over it to protect them from any sanding dust. Uh, my apprentices are working ahead of me here. You can see the uh, traditional beadboard ceiling. This is the good stuff. This is the real thick stuff. And uh, all the tongues and grooves, you can see that's where the white primer is here. All the tongues and grooves are pre-primed so that when these boards expand and contract with the weather, uh, when the tongue shows, uh, it'll be white as well. And they're all fully back primed so that they'll be stable. And again, a huge pain in the rear end, but this is the way to make you know, a hundred year finish out of this stuff here. So this is a good example of the uh, casing here that's fully prepped. You can see it's been filled, it's been caulked, it's been sanded, vacuumed off, dusted, ready to go. Let's take a peek at, there's one of the diligent craftsmen working away at getting those windows super smooth. More beadboard here. brand new pocket door and we have a combination of some salvage stuff you can see the stained and varnished uh, door jam here that will eventually be painted you can see more diligent craftsmen working away here getting that woodwork ready to be prepped I'll take you up to the loft here and uh, especially with the uh, the hashtag Raven Road project I completed last week which was your uh, you know, typical brand new home from the ground up, doing uh, the finest finishes you can possibly produce. Uh, everything from uh, priming all the pre-primed woodwork just to bring it up to my standard, and then two coats of, uh, of a oil water hybrid uh, satin trim enamel. Uh, that's a process that uh, not even you know, four or five million dollar homes in our area get, but it's sort of you know, the standard by which I conduct all that stuff. You can see here some fixed light, True divided light windows. More up in the loft here. 
See some custom little tiny doors for these little cubby holes here. It's gonna be a beautiful project when it's all done. The owners of this one uh, are very good decorators and I can't wait to see how they furnish this place. It's gonna be real sharp. So you can see our scaffolding there. Front door ready to go. I'll take you guys outside here. So eventually we'll be back later in this project and uh, we'll be painting uh, the beadboard here in the traditional finish. Uh, and all these oak shakes uh, were actually hand split uh, by the homeowner. They cut down the tree, they split the shakes themselves, and then they applied them themselves to the house here. So uh, I don't know very many homes that have these beautiful thick pure oak shakes on them. A lot of them are actually white oak. You can see the beautiful sort of, this piece has got some quartering in it. It's, it's a special way of sawing oak. Uh, you quarter it, called quarter sawn, and you actually get these tiger stripes and stuff like this. So this is a super stable piece of wood and, and this is something that furniture is made out of, but the, the exterior of this home is treated uh, with that. So if left, if left to their own devices, these will turn kind of a silvery gray. A lot of kind of uh, East Coast cottages are left that way. The homeowners of this one have decided to uh, stain this uh, in sort of a wood color. We haven't picked it yet, but we'll be back up this summer. You can see that beautiful copper roof right there and all the windows prepped and ready to go. So, all right, take a look through here, see what we got going. Uh, Don, Don Taylor, thank you for watching, Gloria. Juanita Gloria, thank you for watching, past customer of mine. Rob, <laughs> good friend from Canada, Nick Seabald, uh, a fellow St. Benedictine out there. Uh, Juanita, looks interesting. Yeah, this is a very interesting project, and this is sort of, you know, um, projects like this are the reason I started my own company here. It's a, it's a blend of tradition, and it's a blend of the new. You take a traditional shape, and you apply all, uh, all the traditional knowledge and coding, but also the most technologically advanced coatings. And tomorrow, something that I'll be walking everybody through, uh, I'm actually one of the first people to try out this experimental trim enamel from Sherwin-Williams. It hasn't hit the market yet. It's a brand new thing, uh, very, very cutting edge stuff. Uh, I'm very, very excited to tell you guys about it. Uh, I got to do a little more work with it so I can get an accurate in interpretation of it, but uh, that's going to be real interesting, especially for the uh, for the pros watching here. So, James Gilbert, thank you for watching as well. Melinda Stika, thank you for tuning in. Terry Liuski, <laughs> good friend of mine from New Prague. Jason McCoy, Jim Callahan, I'll be painting your house later this summer. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Terry Wagner. Good friend and customer there, Eve Barrett down from Florida. <laughs> How are you guys doing on there? I'm sure your weather is a lot better here. As you can see, we're, we had got a beautiful, probably 43 degree day here. Uh, over in the, uh, I don't know if you can see the mobile command unit down by the lake there, hidden in the trees, but uh, it, was a, it was a crisp and invigorating 34 degrees and raining this morning when I woke up. Uh, very exciting. Uh, Josh Erickson, <laughs> my friend, thanks for watching. Joyce, thanks for watching as well. Well, let's see if I can scroll here without getting my finger in the way. Rob, thanks for the compliment. Uh, Rob, what do you use to fill trim? Uh, I actually use a water-based wood filler from Ace Hardware. Uh, I've kind of, uh, you know, there's a, there's a ton of good fillers out there, but to me a good filler is uh, something that's easy to work with. Uh, water-based, if you can get it, uh, the only problem is traditionally water-based fillers were kind of soft and oil bases were harder, but they took longer to dry. So this stuff ends up being a very, very easy to work with. Very, very sort of malleable. Uh, dries quick, sands easy, and it holds out from flashing. So if you need to, let's say you have uh, everything primed or even first coated, uh, and you see a big defect in the wood or you just want to skim over an area once more, you can skim this stuff. It sands, it's rock hard, it sands glass smooth, and then uh, you can apply enamel over it and it doesn't flash. Flashing is where you get that dead spot where it sucks it up different than a, a piece of primed wood or something. And uh, this stuff doesn't flash. It's, it's an amazing product and uh, I use that to fill all the holes and then you know, you're at your typical uh, you know, painter's caulk for the, uh, for the joints and stuff like that. Mike Peterson, thanks for watching. Roland Vlasak, thank you my friend. Mark McMahon. 
<laughs> Jim looks good, catch some fish. Yeah, me and one of the apprentices actually caught some sunfish last night, and uh, the longer we fished, the bigger they were getting. But it was uh, it was the end of end of uh, end of the day, so we had to uh, close her up. But Chris Shank, good friend of mine and the education guy at PDCA, thanks for watching. Uh, James Gilbert, thank you, my friend. Uh, <laughs> Uh, talking about the uh, Sherwin Williams uh, product, better than Advance. We'll see. Um, Advance has been, uh, you know, my go-to over the years, and uh, it's a, it's a near-perfect product, uh, minus a few little uh, things on the technical data sheet. Uh, number one, the drying time, and uh, possibly uh, this trim enamel uh, addresses that. So uh, I will have much more information for you guys when I can give you an accurate accurate interpretation. But this is kind of cool. The uh, you know the reward for uh, sort of doing a project like this. I paired up with Sherwin-Williams on this one and they gave me a whole bunch of products and uh, work with them on coatings and specs and everything else. And uh, we're actually going top to bottom Sherwin-Williams on this one as sort of a product showcase house. Uh, so I thought that was, that was kind of nice of them to work with, so. Oh, Parker. Oh, Parker, yeah, the, a young fellow who will be joining me as an apprentice this summer. Uh, how often would they have to touch up the exterior so it doesn't look weathered? Uh, most, uh, typically, most penetrating cedar stains on the outside of a house, uh, the, the manufacturers recommend every 12 months to recoat it. Almost nobody does that. Uh, same thing with decks. This product, we're actually going to use a, uh, a sort of log oil, something that's way, uh, you know, way thicker, way more durable, and it's a two-coat system, uh, and again, dries very, very quickly. It's a hybrid system. Uh, from Sherwin Williams, and uh, it's the first time I, I'm going to be using it. We're doing some tests, and we're getting the colors right, and then uh, we're going to proceed. So it's basically, you know, if people are familiar with Sickens, the super thick, super expensive log oil. Uh, we're trying to mimic that, but with a, you know, easier to work with, less toxic, and uh, quicker drying times and things like that. So I'll, I'll have more information as the summer goes on, but me and the apprentices are probably going to come up here, do some pike fishing and uh, some bass fishing, and then get this done too. So, And hopefully... I'll bring the mobile command unit up again, and uh, hopefully it won't be 34 degrees and raining again. So, um, uh, Gregory Gill, have you ever tried Rymar on this type of structure? Uh, I'm not familiar with Rymar. It uh, it might be. Uh, I, I'm assuming it's sort of a specific uh, coating to a certain area. Um, let me know what it is. I'll certainly do my research on it. If it's something I can get, I'm, I'm always interested in uh, in some new products here. So. Okay, well, thank you guys for watching so much. And, uh, you know, I haven't had too many updates today. Uh, we have had a busy, busy day, including two power outages here. Uh, obviously, that slows down uh, our progress on a, on a gloomy sort of uh, spring day in Minnesota when we can't use light sanders or sprayers. But uh, we've, been, we've been maintaining, and uh, actually we're a little bit ahead of schedule. So I will keep posting pictures for you guys. And uh, tomorrow, expect another uh, live update. And any questions you guys have about this process, about anything, uh, we can do that. And then uh, come Friday, I'll do a formal Ask a Painter uh, if I'm still here. And we can just do a general sort of question and answer session if you guys are interested. So thank you so much for following along. If you want to know more about this project uh, and, and when I give product updates and things like that, follow the hashtag Cottage Cabin, uh, and I will give you all of the, uh, all of the products. Uh, Gregory, it's a Sherwin-Williams product that I use on the southeast on log and cedar homes. I'm very interested. Uh, I know that Sherwin-Williams absorbs a lot of regional products. Around here, uh, Duckback was kind of absorbed by Sherwin-Williams. Uh, so I, I think that's one of the products we'll be experimenting with, but uh, I will definitely check into that and uh, let my rep know about that. And uh, yeah, because if it's something good uh, on log and cedar, I'm always interested about that. Anything I can do to perfect the sort of, you know, wood preservation exterior, especially of Minnesota when it's so tough, I'm always interested. So all right, thank you guys. Um, I'm heating up some hot dogs for the guys, some homemade wieners from my local meat market here. So as soon as they're done sanding, they're going to get treated to uh, an all-you-can-eat hot dog fest here, and then. Hopefully we won't be working too late, but uh, trim enamel goes on tomorrow, so I'll give you guys a sneak peek then. Talk to you later.